हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू अवर ऑनलाइन प्लेटफॉर्म एबीसी ऑफ फूड वी आर स्टार्टिंग द सीरीज ऑफ फूड प्रोसेसिंग लेक्चर्स इन दिस फर्स्ट लेक्चर वी विल बी स्टडिंग द स्कोप ऑफ फूड प्रोसेसिंग सम बेसिक डेफिनेशंस एंड स्पॉइलेज ऑफ फूड ओके लेट अस स्टार्ट आवर लेक्चर बाय द डेफिनेशन ऑफ फूड प्रोसेसिंग इट इज द ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन ऑफ रॉ फूड मटेरियल्स इनटू अदर फॉर्म्स ऑफ फूड प्रोडक्ट इदर बाय फिजिकली or chemically means it combines raw food material to produce marketable food products here raw food materials means any agriculture product or any dairy product or it can be any meat or poultry product this food processing also includes the process of value addition to the final products and second is food preservation it is a process in which food and vegetables are prevented from getting spoiled the color taste shelf life of food and nutritive values of food is also preserved here are the some examples of traditional form of food preservation here like pickles murabbas and sun drying of grains why we process food what is the need of processing to extend the shelf life to satisfy the taste to make more varieties of food for convenience purposes to meet the requirements of rapidly increasing population by applying various preservation techniques like freezing and drying we can increase the shelf life of food India is the second largest producer of fruit and vegetables in the world and around 18% of total production is wasted annually according to the data from CFED Processing of fruits and vegetables is extremely low in India only at around 2 to 5% of total production For minimizing this wastages post harvesting is needed What is post harvesting management It includes the process done immediately after harvesting the fruits or vegetables from its parent plant as it begins to deteriorate therefore post harvest treatments are given to increase its shelf life and maintain its quality thus post harvest management largely determines the final quality some of the process includes cleaning cooling sorting and packaging now we see the classes of foods based on perishability or spoilage first is perishable foods are foods that spoil quickly within one or two days for example milk meat fish poultry and most of fruits and vegetables come under this category only second is semi perishable food if these foods are properly handled and stored they can last for one to two weeks for example vegetables like onions potatoes garlic fall under this category third is non perishable foods items these foods are those that generally last for one year and do not get spoiled unless handled improperly for example greens category like wheat rice pulses come under this category of food food spoilage Food spoilage is defined as a process leading to the deterioration of the safety, sensory quality or nutritional value of food. Any damage or injury to food which is unsuitable for human consumption known as food spoilage. Following are the different types of food spoilage. First is microbial spoilage, second is enzymatic spoilage, third is chemical spoilage and fourth is physical spoilage. Microbial spoilage is due to, to the activity or presence of microorganisms and enzymatic spoilage is due to enzyme catalyzed reactions and chemical spoilage due to the chemical reaction between food components and the surroundings Now what are the causes of food spoilage a number of causes are responsible for food spoilage These include activities of enzymes present in the food, growth and activities of microorganisms, insects, parasites and rodents, temperature whether it is heat or cold, moisture, light and time, 
reaction with oxygen. Enzymes present in the food is responsible for the many changes like in change in color or texture. Insects and rodents destroy the grains if not properly stored. Temperature whether it is hot or cold can contribute to food spoilage if not properly controlled. Excessive heat brings about protein denaturation and destroy vitamins. Whereas uncontrolled cold will also can spoil the food. Fresh fruits and vegetables are damaged even at the cold temperature. Moisture presence of and absence of excess moisture in foods lead to the food spoilage. All food spoilage factors are time dependent. Larger the time, more is the damage. Light also destroyed some vitamins and food colors. Air and oxygen also destroyed the food as oxygen can lead to the growth of microorganisms which can harm the food. Microbial spoilage of food, bacteria, yeast, and molds are the major causes of food spoilage, but not all microorganisms can cause food spoilage. Use of lactic acid producing bacteria in making of dairy products, use of yeasts as leavening agents in making of bread. These are some microorganisms which does not cause food spoilage. They produce various enzymes that decompose the various components of food. Now the favorable condition for growth of bacteria. The structure is spherical shape, cylindrical shape, and spiral shape. Length is about 1 micrometer and require maximum moisture content. Some bacteria cannot tolerate oxygen, known as anaerobic, for example, Clostridium, and some require oxygen for growth, known as aerobic bacteria, for example, Pseudomonas. Some can grow in an atmosphere devoid of oxygen but manage also in air, for example, Salmonella and E. coli. pH is required around 6 to 8. Bacteria spores are more resistant to most processing conditions than yeast or mold spores. Some bacteria can grow below 20 degrees centigrade, known as sacrophiles, for example, lactobacillus, and some can grow between 20 degrees centigrade to 45 degrees centigrade, known as mesophiles, for example, Cetrobacter, and some can grow above 45 degrees centigrade, known as thermophiles, for example, Clostridium bacillus. But the most suitable temperature is 37 degrees centigrade temperature, which is optimum temperature for growth of bacteria. And now the some favorable condition for growth of yeast and molds. Yeast can grow both conditions, that is in aerobic and anaerobic conditions, whereas molds can grow only in presence of oxygen, that is aerobic conditions. Temperature is mainly between the 20 to 25 centigrade and for molds it is also a 20 to 25 centigrade. Yeast can grow well in slightly acidic medium in the presence of sugar and water, whereas molds can grow in highly acidic medium with high concentration of sugar. Moisture require less than bacteria, whereas molds require less free moisture for growth than yeast and bacteria. So here we complete the topics and I hope you like this lecture. So, thank you. Please like, share and subscribe this.